for Glasgow Rangers. The one and a half million pound move from the French club Nantes comes less than a fortnight after a proposed transfer to Rangers arch rival Celtic fell through. Glasgow's football clubs are divided by unshakable religious loyalties. Maurice Johnson has now committed the ultimate heresy, changing his shirt from green to blue. Anywhere else in the world it would have been a simple transfer, but when the Rangers manager revealed his new player this morning, the sporting community braced itself for an angry reaction. For many supporters, the signing of any Catholic is unthinkable, but to make it worse, just a few weeks ago, Johnson was walking out with the Celtic manager, saying he'd re-signed for them. But when that deal fell through, Graham Soonest moved in. Wow. <laughs> Are you in trouble at all about the pressures that will be on him as the first Catholic to play here? There'll be pressures on all my players next year because we now have a big squad. There's no one who's going to be an automatic choice, and that includes Morris. And outside, the first signs of the storm which Rangers will now have to weather. I don't like him. Because you don't think he's a good enough footballer because he's a Roman Catholic? Because he's a Roman Catholic. Do you feel it's the kind of thing that would stop you being a Rangers supporter? Or are you happy to oh, go on? stop me and a lot of other people like that. The fans have already come to terms with a big influx of English talent. Now soon as must make them accept the ultimate outsider. The England soccer manager Bobby Robson has been banned from driving for a month after admitting to speak. Good evening. Glasgow Rangers today ended their long-standing policy of not signing Roman Catholic footballers. And they did so in the most dramatic fashion, securing the transfer of the former Celtic star Morris Johnston from the French club Nantes. The news is doubly controversial because just weeks ago it looked certain that Johnston would be returning to Celtic before that deal broke down amid legal threats. He now becomes the first Roman Catholic to be signed for the Rangers' first team in modern times. The player himself said today, I didn't think it was possible that I would become a Rangers player. He was aware of the problems. Obviously it's going to be difficult, he said, but I can overcome that. And he added pointedly, I won't be living in Glasgow. The sensational deal was welcomed by Labour's spokesman on Scottish sport, the MP Brian Wilson. He described it as a quantum change in Scottish football and possibly in Scottish society. Immediately after today's shock announcement, the player was flown by private jet from Glasgow to Tuscany in Italy, where the Rangers squad are in pre-season training. The crowds gathered early today at Ibrook Stadium in anticipation of a memorable day in the history of Rangers Football Club. Inside the Blue Room, Rangers chairman David Murray primed the assembled media on what he stressed was a major sporting story. When Graham Souness finally led Morris Johnston into the room, it was confirmed that the club's notorious sectarian image had been swept away in the most spectacular fashion possible. Johnston, already wearing a Rangers blazer and tie, looked remarkably relaxed for a man who'd just placed himself in a position of extreme pressure. Whatever anxiety he may have been feeling inside, it certainly wasn't shared by his new boss. I think he'll be a great Ranger. I think he's got all the, all the qualities. His track record um, speaks for itself. He scored goals in his time before in Scotland. He scored goals when he went to France and he scored goals at international level. And I'm sure he'll get goals for us again next year. McCoyst, no Johnston. It was after scoring these two goals for Scotland against France that Johnston's career started taking some strange turns. He dramatically returned to Parkhead from France, pledging his allegiance to Billy McNeil and Celtic in a £1.2 million transfer. As I say, I'm really delighted. As I say, there was other, there was other offers, but as I say, there's only one team I want to play for, and that's Celtic. The return of the prodigal son was greeted with euphoria and celebration of his old days in a Celtic jersey. But before the party had started, it was over, spoiled by the deal falling through and more going back to France. Today Johnston was limiting his comments to the future at Ibrox, rather than dwelling on recent trauma. came to a really big club, possibly one of the biggest in Europe. Obviously we can maybe go all the way in Europe. Very pleased to be here. Got great admiration for Graham Souness. A lot of players that play with Rangers, he's got a, a lot of admiration for them. Like Alan McCoy, Terry Bishop, Ray Wilkins, people like that. So I think he'll do extremely well. He's very happy now that he's here. You know his father's a Rangers supporter. So I think he's probably the happiest man in the UK at the moment. What about the problems with the Celtic supporters? He told them that he wanted to go back to Celtic, then he said he didn't. What's going to be the problem in old firm games? 
Well, I, I really can't comment on that. All I can say to you is that there were personal and contractual problems, uh, which everyone knows about, and it was completely out with our control. Fortunately, in this particular occasion, we were able to resolve everyone, everything to everyone's satisfaction. Well, obviously, there's a lot of considerations we have to take into account. The main one being, David, that he is an out-and-out -out quality player. Are you he, troubled at all about the pressures that will be on him as the first Catholic to play here? There'll be pressures on all my players next year because we now have a big squad. There's no one who's going to be an automatic choice, and that includes Morris. Um, there's pressures at playing for Rangers. It's a big club. You have to accept those things when you come here. Now, bearing in mind what happened with him and Celtic, do you not see an injection of bitterness, further injection well, of bitterness into old firm encounters? Maybe, maybe some people would see it that way. I hope not, because at the end of the day, there was genuine problems which, which um, he felt he couldn't get around. We have, we have managed to persuade him um, to come to Rangers, because there were problems for him, and we, we have got around them for him. After today's press conference, Johnston left Ibrox by a side entrance on his way to join his new teammates at their Italian training camp. Outside the main door, reactions were mixed. What's your reaction to Morris joining Why is that? Because everything's away now, isn't it? What do you mean by that? The and everything. I think it's up to the Rangers of course to welcome the guy when he comes, when he goes on and cheer him on, you know, and forget about all the religious uh, barriers. And, you know, see, right, Morris joins a Rangers player and that's the most important thing. Let's give, him, give the guy a chance. He's a, one of the best uh, strikers in Europe and he's now a Rangers player. So stop me and a lot of other people like that. Why is that? Could you explain? Just, just one of your things, isn't it? Be more detailed about it. Can I, though? <laughs> is it simply because he's a Roman Catholic? No, no. Do you just feel he's a good enough player for Rangers? Uh, is that in itself play. not enough? I don't know. Are you going to continue to be a Rangers supporter? I don't know, I'll have to decide that. Surely Morris Johnson is a great player. There are opinions in it. You would rather he hadn't signed for Rangers? Aye. Could you just explain why? Because I didn't like him. Because you don't think he's a good enough footballer because he's a Roman Catholic? Because he's a Roman Catholic. As far as religion is concerned, there's nothing much to do it. He's the best centre forward that Brit Scotland can put into the World Cup team. That's as far as I want to know it, but I was. As long as they can get the best, I'm quite happy with it. Over at Celtic Park, the news from Ibrox was greeted with dismay. Devastated. Absolutely devastated. Totally out of question. What do you think of, of Johnson now? I said, I've got no time for the man. I don't like him anymore. I don't know how he could play for Rangers. Club will get over it, but it's just the fact that he's selling wear after him. He's turned around and done that. Johnston has always enjoyed old firm occasions, a fact reflected in his comments at Parkhead in May. When we play here at Parkhead, just running out that jungle again, it's just, um, I'm delighted. Johnston will finally get that chance at Parkhead on the 26th of August, but this time he'll be wearing a blue jersey. The Lanarkshire town of Lark Hall is perhaps the most staunch Rangers stronghold in central Scotland. Red, white and blue predominate, as do Protestants. Roman Catholics are outnumbered by an estimated 18 to 1. News of Morris Johnston's arrival at Ibrox was met with predictable shock and some horror around the town's pubs. I never thought I'd have seen a Catholic, especially the one that did sign there. Uh, just unbelievable. I can't get over it. I'll maybe wake up in the morning and it'll maybe be true. You take it that seriously? Aye. He's a good player, but he's a Catholic. And this town here is Rangers supporters. And he is. Do you think, do you think Rangers supporters will stop going because Morris Johnson signed and he's a Catholic? Some, some might. Some might. No, I think the uh, Rangers will lose some support through this. Rangers, their motto stands for are you ready? And that's what it's for. It's for blue noses, it's not for Catholics. I, I don't agree with saying a Catholic. I've nothing against them by the way, but keep keep it a blue team and they're going a lot better. He's a Catholic and that's it. And this is a Protestant part of the country. Do you think it's a good thing that he's he's signed for Rangers? Good thing for himself, maybe. Where finance is concerned. But for Rangers, I don't think so, no. 
I never ever thought they would have signed a Gatha. But if you're going to say, if you're, if you're going to be forced to sign one, you're real signing with the best, aren't you? And he's, he's, he is the best. So you agree with the decision to sign Morris Johnson even though he's a Catholic? I wouldn't say I would agree, no. But uh, if you're going to be made to sign this European thing, it's, you're as real with the best. I'll be very surprised that the people in Lark Hall will uh, entertain it. The acid test for the fans from Lark Hall will come when Morris Johnson finally steps onto the field in a Rangers jersey. Only time will tell if their attitude can be changed. The blue and the green of the old firm clubs is Alfie Conn. A Rangers player first, he won a Scottish Cup medal with the Ibrox Club in 1973. Conn. Conn But he was to move to the East End and to Celtic after a brief spell at Tottenham Hotspur. He won another Scottish Cup medal and scored many goals with the Parkhead Club. Straight through. Con. Goal. Alfie Con becomes Celtic's top scorer with his seventh goal of the season. So Alfie Con, perhaps better than anyone else, knows something of what life could now be like for Morris Johnson. Basically, Morris, uh, on the field of play, I don't think he should have that many problems. Basically, the majority of his problems are going to be off the park. Uh, he's going to find out who true friends are. Uh, they make the move across the road to Ibrox. Uh, people that he could talk to are now going to turn against him. Uh, but just in general, the majority of his pressure will come off the park, not on the park. Do you think that he will alienate some of the Rangers fans? Um, I think that's a very possibility, very much a pos possibility. Um, the Rangers supporters have been brought up in 120 years of tradition and it's obvious it's going to affect, uh, I would reckon, quite a few thousand. Now, Alfie, you've been out of the game for some years now. Do you find that there are still some people who can't accept that you played for both clubs? Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, the ten years I've been out of the game, and I still get a bit of abuse from uh, from both sets, of, uh, both sets of supporters. Uh, but it's a thing Morris has got to live with, and if it's in his, in his own makeup that he can handle that sort of pressure. Good luck to him. In truth, Alfie, is it a good move for Morris Johnson? Uh, only time will tell, Hazel. Um, obviously, the first two or three months, he's going to be getting a bit of flack, uh, a bit of abuse from both sets. Um, and hopefully, his goal scoring ability, plus his ability on the park, should bring him through. The Rangers signing was welcomed by Labour spokesman on Scottish Sport, Brian Wilson MP. He said it was now up to the club supporters to show that they followed a football team and not a religious symbol. Mr Wilson, who is also the parliamentary advisor to the Scottish Football Players Union, said he was sure the majority of fans would back the club. Well, it's extraordinary news, uh, although it must be one of the, these rare occasions when pub talk in Glasgow was about six weeks ahead of the press and absolutely accurate. Uh, two levels. One, I don't think that the whole negotiations, the whole Celtic business and so on reflects credit on anyone. Um, but having got that out of the road, then I think it does, it is a quantum change in uh, Scottish football and possibly in Scottish society. And on these grounds, it, it, it's welcome. Do you think it really is an end, or the beginning of the end, to the kind of sectarianism that we've seen over the years? Well, what it ends is the employment policy which has been practised by Rangers Football Club. And you don't change attitudes overnight, and some people will welcome it, some Rangers supporters will welcome it, some Rangers supporters will, will oppose it. Um, but I think the important thing is that it has happened, uh, it will be assimilated. And now it has happened, I mean, what a nonsense the whole thing is. Because I, 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 don't, I would be very surprised if Mo Johnson was a... Uh, a great practitioner of, of any religion. Uh, he's a football player um, who shares the interests and values of most football players and uh, I think in a relatively short time that's exactly the way he'll be looked upon. Yeah, so you would overall welcome it as, a, as an end to the type of sectarian practice though that was going on? Well, no one could defend uh, a football club which operated an employment policy which was based on uh, religious origins. Um, and 
I think Rangers have increasingly had to realise that they couldn't defend it and practice it any longer if they were going to be accepted in, in the, the wider football world and the wider business world, which clearly uh, interests them very much. Um, as I say, I don't think there's going to be any dramatic change in public attitudes as a, as a result. But the thing about the, that policy, the policy with Rangers practice was that, that, that as long as it existed, um, then they could to some extent be held responsible for, for social attitudes. If they've changed that policy, then I think they have freed themselves from something um, which ultimately did, did not reflect well upon them and which did not reflect well upon Scottish society. Reaction there to the dramatic signing of Maurice Johnson. Usual for another reason. Johnson is a Catholic, and normally Rangers players are Protestants. Throughout the history of Rangers and Celtic, there's been an ugly side to the sporting rivalry, sectarianism. The clubs have tried to deny it, but the attention today has been largely centred on the fact that Mo Johnson will be the first Roman Catholic to play in Rangers' first team. An issue the club refused to discuss, their reasons for signing the player were simple. Because I believe he's the best centre forward in British football today. We don't get many opportunities to buy the best because of so many clubs chasing and this was an opportunity and we went for it. I think um, Morris will do very well for this club. He's a goal getter, he's a proven goal scorer. Uh, I've came to a really big club, possibly one of the biggest in Europe. Obviously we can get the goal that we in Europe, hopefully. I'd just like to be joining it, but... But as the news of the signing broke, there was predictable reaction from the hard liners. We've lost a hell of a lot of conditions ever since Mr. Soon is not too over. He's done a lot of good for Rangers, but this, I don't think, is any good. I'm disgusted. The jersey you see here will be my last act of defiance, because I'll certainly not be wearing it anymore. There was anger too among Celtic fans, to whom Johnston used to be a hero. His first goal for Celtic. Only a month ago, he was transferring to them. This is what he had to say then. I've finished my career here. I don't want to play for anybody else. So I don't want any speculation about me going anywhere else. I just want to play for Celtic. That's, that's fine. But the deal fell through. This afternoon, Celtic refused to comment on the shock signing of their arch rivals. Cricket and at Edgbaston. Rangers have paid out one and a half million pounds to put an end to both the Morris Johnson transfer row and their sectarian reputation. The Scotland striker joined the Ibrox club from Nantes this morning, weeks after a move to bring him back to Celtic collapsed. Johnson now becomes the most prominent Catholic player to represent Celtic's traditional rivals and another expensive contribution to Rangers' European Cup ambitions. The player says he's delighted to have crossed the traditional divide, but he and his family will not be living in Glasgow, where loyalties still run deep. The news brought mixed reaction from football fans and a cautious welcome from churches and politicians. The SNP said they were delighted that Rangers sectarian policy now seems to be dead. It had no place in Scottish football. Rangers manager Graham Souness struck the deal by contacting Morris Johnson's agent Bill McMurdo as soon as it became clear the player would never go to Celtic. McMurdo is a noted loyalist and so widely known are his politics to the football public they'll see the irony of him smoothing the way to Rangers signing a Catholic. But Rangers officials sidestep questions of how they'd finally ended the club's sectarian policy of not signing Catholic players. Club chairman David Murray set the tone. He called it a business decision which might please some and upset other fans. When you're the chairman of a board of directors, you have to make decisions and they will not always be whatever they want. Johnston will be well aware of the difficulties of coming to Ibrox. He said he wouldn't make his home in Glasgow but refused to say anything more on the matter. He's been given a four-year contract. Details of his earnings were not released, but it can be safely assumed that Rangers have more than matched what he would have earned going to Celtic. Uh, I came to a really big club, possibly one of the biggest in Europe. Obviously we can... Maybe go all the way in Europe, hopefully. I'd just like to be joining the This is clearly a business deal, but what do you expect the attitude of the Celtic fans to be to this signing? My concern is Rangers Football Club. I came here to do the best for them. Um, I've made mistakes, will continue to make mistakes. Today I feel I've signed a great player for Rangers Football Club. And the attitude of the Rangers fans? I have, I have been supported. They have got behind this club from day one. And I don't expect, I expect it to be any different. We sign them more Johnson. I expect them to get behind them fully as well. But away from the euphoria of the Ibrox boardroom, opinion was divided among Rangers fans on whether Johnson would receive a warm welcome in a Rangers jersey. 
I'm disgusted. The jersey you see here will be the, my last act of defiance because I'll certainly not be wearing it anymore. I don't think I'll be back. Some supporters don't like it. Um, but they've got to get behind the club. They want the best club now in Europe. We've got to get the best players. Johnson's one of them. He's better staying in France, I think, because uh, I don't think he'll be able to walk in Glasgow because the Celtic supporters will not want to see him and the Rangers supporters will not want to see him. And I don't understand Sunnis. Sunnis is the greatest team in the world and they can, trip, they can combine all the English players. They don't need to especially sign a Glasgow, especially a Celtic player and a Catholic. For Rangers, I still think it's a good signing. I think it's a brave signing. The guys are going to get hassled for both sides, Rangers and Celtic supporters. I think it's a brave effort for Rangers to bring them out of the Ibrox. And if you're going to sign a Catholic, you're going to sign a good one, he must be the best. Will you be going back to Ibrox? Certainly. I know a lot of people feel like me, I know boys that's just flung away their season tickets and they've only just paid for them. But I'm a Ranger through and through. I'm a Protestant through and through. You'll not get me at Ibrox again. That's it. Why not? Because they signed the Catholic. I don't want any speculation about me going anywhere else. I just want to play for Celtic, and that's, that's fine. Reporting Scotland in the second week of May, and Mo Johnston says he'll never play for anyone else than Celtic. Yet his decision today, two months on, has stunned the Celtic management, who hoped he would help them rival Rangers' dominance. No one was available for comment at Parkhead. A spokesman said the decision was a matter between Rangers and the player. But like the Ibrox fans, the Parkhead faithful had plenty to say. I think he's a little traitor. He's a mercenary for money. And but Rangers are welcome. Well, he's getting the money for it, obviously, but he's going to get a lot of stick for both ends. Are you pleased to see Rangers sign a Catholic? Aye, ah, certainly. I think that's a good thing, and I hope it does the trick, although I doubt it, but I hope it does. How will the Rangers fans see it? Oh, the decent ones will see it the way any other decent person will see it. And uh, the bigots will, hopefully, they'll know go and that will suit Rangers. Churches and politicians gave the signing a cautious welcome. A spokesman for the Roman Catholic Church in Scotland said if it was a genuine breakthrough, then all Scotland would rejoice. The Church of Scotland thought if it removed sectarian attitudes, it was to be welcomed. The SNP said it was delighted Rangers' sectarian policy now seemed to be dead. Labour MP Brian Wilson is author of the official history of Celtic. Well, I think there's two reactions. One, that uh, I, I don't think the whole performance that has preceded it reflects much credit on the, on the parties involved uh, and I think Rangers supporters uh, must be conscious of that as, as well. Uh, clearly the implications uh, for Scottish football and Scottish society of the signing taking place are considerable uh, and I, I think they must be positive. Such views will be put to the test for the first time on the last Saturday of August when Rangers and their supporters go to Parkhead for the first... The player says he's confident that his goal-scoring abilities will surmount any initial hostility from the Rangers crowd. The expression on Mo Johnson's face today said it all about pre-season training. Rangers' newest recruit went through a number of physical tests with his Ibrox teammates. If there is pressure on the player following his recent historic signing, then he certainly wasn't showing it. He's clearly glad to be looking forward to the season ahead with Rangers. So what's life been like since he signed? Honestly, the lads have been tremendous. As soon as I arrived in Italy, the lads have been great. Um, I played one match in a Glasgow Rangers trip. Things have been tremendous. How did that feel when you, you pulled on the Rangers jersey for the first time? I don't think it feels any different from pulling on a Patrick Thistle jersey or a Watford jersey or a Celtic jersey. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm playing for the jersey. Um, I'll be given 100%. Um, I've signed a four-year contract name to see it out. It was, of course, an explosive story. One minute you were going to Celtic, the next minute you're at Rangers. Have you had to pinch yourself? I mean, have, have you woken up to the fact yet that you are a Rangers player? <coughs> yeah, truthfully, things have happened so quickly. Um, Graham Souness, David Murray, they, worked, they operated really well um, in Nantes. With Bill McMurdo and myself, things were done within four days. It was really, really, really quick. As far as I was concerned, I was happy the way Graham Souness was acting. David Murray as well, they gave me their full backing. So obviously, it was a difficult decision for me, but I accepted. Any regrets at all that you're a Rangers player and not a Celtic player, as, as certainly looked at one stage? No, none whatsoever. Um, obviously, I've signed a four-year deal, which will take me to I'm 30. Hopefully, I can extend that, maybe in a couple of years' time, if things go well for me. But obviously, once I know the fans are behind me, that'll be the easiest part, because I'll be given 100%. All I need is one chance.
At this stage, do you think the fans will get behind you pretty quickly, Mo? I was sitting in the dressing room there, I was speaking to the gaffer. Um, I was looking through all my mail and I've not had one hate mail. So obviously, yeah, it's very, very... It's great for me, to be honest with you. I was, I was expecting to come into quite a lot. But having said that, the Rangers fans have been tremendous. There will be pressure on you, more rightly or wrongly, next season. Probably more off the field than on it. How do you think you'll live with that? I think the pressure is going to be off the field rather than on the field because deep down I know that I can score goals for Glasgow Rangers and I think the fans know that as well. Once I give 100% but having said that, off the field will be difficult, I've got to apply myself right. But having said that, I've got a baby now, I'm settled, things are great. And in the short term, at the start of the season, what, what kind of job do you think you can do for them? A great job, to be honest with you. Um, I've played up front with Arthur McCoy, so I've played up front with Kevin Renko in the, one of the games in Italy. Things went great, scored two goals. So, <laughs> truthfully, I'm happy the way things are going at the moment, and I know I can score goals here. Next month, all roads lead to Pie Head for the old firm game. Um, I remember Morris Johnson telling me not too long ago he was, he was looking forward to running out in front of the jungle. You will be doing <laughs> that, Mo, but in a, in a different jersey, in a Rangers jersey. Um, have you thought about that fixture? No, I haven't thought about it. Okay, things will be difficult there. but. As I say, it's an old firm match. I played an old firm match. Don't forget, I played in front of the Celtic fans when they booed me when I left. So having said that, if I can score against them, well, who knows? You look happy and well contented. Oh, Jim, it's, it's really a football story. OK, there might be the sectarian thing coming in it, but at the end of the day, I've signed a contract, entering into a contract, being a football contract, nothing else, and I aim to see that contract out.